Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to have a look at how to process CAD data within Instalot Studio. The first thing I'll do is import this CATIA file. We can see that this already gets tessellated on import. On the right hand side, we've got the CAD Live Link plugin, which enables us to modify our meshes after they've been loaded by keeping a link to the NURBS data in the CAD files. The crucial parts for the CAD workflow are the CAD Live Link and Scene Import rules, which even before processing our assets, we can use the metadata set up by engineers to do specific actions using attributes or rules on import of the assets. Now, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and change my materials. Inside of the material editor, I'm going to make sure that my filter is on so that I can filter out the materials for the selected objects. Here I've got my dark stone material. I'm going to go ahead and increase my metalness and bring that roughness up a little bit. I'm also going to select the outer rim and bring that roughness down and make this a red rim. Now, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and change my environment light to a studio light so we can really appreciate the shading and analyze how the light flows on our assets so we can see when and where we start to break the shading. By default, we already have a beautiful tessellation. But what if in this case I want a nicer bevel? This is really easy to do by retessellating, and we can retessellate either entire scenes by selecting the root node or single assets by selecting individual parts. I'm going to go to the CAD Live Link plugin, and inside of here we've got a few different settings. Starting off with the metrics, we've got the units, which are set up in centimeters, and then inside of the tessellation settings, we've got the maximum deviation. And this creates a threshold of how much we allow Instalod to deviate and change the mesh when tessellating. So if Instalod exceeds this threshold, it will subdivide those areas to stay within that tolerance. Then we have the maximum edge length and the maximum angle, which you probably know from other tessellators. I'm going to go ahead and set this number down a little bit. Then I'm going to select my center part and retessellate. And there we go. We can see that now our bevel has a finer tessellation. This is really useful in this case, but in a lot of cases, this actually isn't ideal because small parts can start to get tessellated very densely compared to using the maximum deviation, which looks at the individual parts and tessellates those individually with a tolerance to achieve a good result. So I'm going to go ahead and set my maximum deviation to 0.01. And I'm going to make sure that my center part is selected again and retessellate. And there we go. We can now see that we have a beautiful tessellation. But what if I don't want these long edges? What I can do to change this is I can use the maximum edge length. I'm going to go ahead and set this to 1, then select my centerpiece again and retessellate. And there we go. We can already see that the tessellation is extremely fast and gives us beautiful results in just a few seconds. So let's say I'm happy with the tessellation. In this case, I know that I've actually got some shading issues. For example, you can see here this shading split. And this is very common for CAD data because these parts are made up of multiple patches and these patches end up creating these shading splits. So this is usually something that a 3D operator would have to fix. But we can go ahead and do this really easily inside of Instalot Studio using the CAD Live Link. So on the right hand side, we've got some settings for shading. First of all, you can see we've got Recalculate Normals. So I'm going to select this and then select my centerpiece again and retessellate. And there you go. You can see that we fixed these shading splits. But now we've actually introduced some other issues. If I go ahead and zoom into these holes here, for example, we can see that now I've actually introduced some singularities with the normals. So in this case, recalculating the normals didn't give us the best result. So I'm going to uncheck this, select my mesh again, and retessellate. And there you go. The shading around these holes now are looking good again, but now we've got our shading split back. So instead of using recalculate normals, I want to go ahead and use shading magic. I'm going to set this to normal, select and retessellate my mesh. And so shading magic lets Instalot look at the different patches inside of the NURBS data and tackle those areas to fix the shading selectively. And we can see that in this case, it actually fixed the shading split that we previously had. And the great thing is that it didn't create any new broken shading. So let me go ahead and actually change my materials again. I'm going to go ahead and select my centerpiece and let's make this gold. Then I'm going to grab the outer rim and let's make this black. So we can see how easy it is to jump back and forth and configure your CAD data to your needs. 
So now I'm happy with the tessellation and I'm happy with the shading. What I want to do now is go into my mesh operation settings and let's do a UV unwrap. So to do this, I'll select UV unwrap as my mesh operation. And for the unwrap strategy, I want to use the hard surface axial algorithm. Now with that selected, I'm going to click start and let this process. Now here we've got a little pop up saying that we're going to freeze the tessellation, but I'm happy with the way that it is. So I'm going to go ahead and click proceed. So what this means is that I won't be able to go back into the CAD live link and change the tessellation again. So here we've got our result. Now I'm going to open up the UV viewer and I'll select my mesh. And here we can see we've got a beautiful UV unwrap. So the next thing that I want to do is a material merge. And the reason for that is because this scene has three different objects and we have three separate materials as well. So I'm going to go back to the mesh operation settings tab, change this to material merge. And I want to go to my texture settings and make sure that I check the roughness and metalness information because I want to include those in the bake. With this done, I'll click start and let this run. So the material merge is actually quite important in this case, because first of all, I only have one material. And second of all, we can bake out any textures from this flat shader and apply it to any other exotic shader. So we're not being limited to having to create a material library dedicated to specific renderers. We can simply use our baked textures with any shader for any renderer. So let's have another look at our UVs. If we turn on the textures, we can see that we have our roughness, our metalness, and our color. Now, the final step that I want to do is combine these meshes together, because at the moment we still have three draw calls. So to do this, I'm going to go into the mesh toolkit operation, and I want to use the combine meshes feature. Now with that selected, I'll click start and let this run. And since we have it open, we can also see on the right that the mesh toolkit also has a ton of really useful features. For example, we can split by materials or fill holes. So now that we're done with this, we can see that on the top left hand side, we only have one draw call. So now I could go ahead and export this scene and import it into our renderer. But in this case, I want to bring this into a VR application. So I'm going to have to go down with my polygon count. To do this, I want to use the remesh feature. Now inside of the remesh mesh operation, I'm going to keep everything on the default settings apart from the UVs. I want to make sure here that I'm also using the hard surface axial algorithm. Now with this selected, I'm going to go to my bake output, double check that metalness and roughness is selected. I also want to make sure that I'm using the object space normal map instead of the tangent space normal map because this typically gives better results. Now I can go ahead and simply click start and use my processed mesh. Inside of the remesh feature, we can see that we're using the fuzzy face count target. So the fuzzy face count target here lets Instalod figure out on its own what the best amount of faces is to get a good result. I've currently got this set to normal, so we will receive a poly count which is usable for a real time environment, for example, for PC or console. Now, if I were to set this to low, it would be good for a mobile application. And if I set this to lowest, it'll be something insignificant in the background that we probably won't see from up close. Then we also have the resolution. Now the surface construction resolution looks at what detail will get modeled out and what detail will end up inside of the normal map. From almost 80,000 polygons, we're down to just seven and a half thousand. So in this case, the high tessellated parts enabled us to create a low resolution asset and receive a great result that holds up from even up close. Let's go ahead and have a look at the UVs and textures. So here you can see the newly generated UVs, along with the roughness, the metalness, the color, and finally the normal map. The normal map here contains all the information to achieve high resolution details. And in this case, beautiful shading on all the curves. So let's have a quick recap of what we've done so far. First, we imported a CATIA file, then we retessellated it selectively. Then we went along and fixed the shading and ended up doing a UV unwrap and material merge. So we baked out all the textures and then we combined all the meshes together with the mesh toolkit. So we were left with one single draw call. Finally, we did a remesh so that we were able to bring our asset into a VR environment. But what if I want to apply this to an entire library with thousands of assets? Well, this is actually really easy. 
All I have to do is go up to the top where this timeline is and select this little arrow and convert timeline to profile. And now on the left hand side, inside of the mesh operations panel, we can see that each of our mesh operations are connected to one another. So we can go ahead and export this profile and run it through Installot Pipeline. Or if I want to, I can actually go back in my timeline to the original unmodified mesh. I'm going to delete my history and keep current profile. So I can go ahead now and do all the steps that were previously done in one single click of a button. And the beautiful thing is that we're going to achieve the same level of quality and only have one entry in the timeline history. Now on the top left, we can see this connection between each of these steps with this pink line here. And this means that we're going to be using the previous output as the input for the next operation. So first we're going to do the UV unwrap, then that mesh is going to be brought into the material merge, then into the mesh toolkit, and finally the remesh. And on the right, we can see that currently only the final step is going to be exported with this arrow with a circle. So if we wanted to, we could select some of these other circles and add arrows to them so that each step would get exported as a single mesh. And there we go. Again, we're down to just seven and a half thousand faces. And we have a beautiful tessellation with beautiful shading as well. But what if I wanted to apply this now to an entire library of assets? Well, to do this, all I have to do is go to File, and then choose Run Profile in Instalod Pipeline. So now we have Instalod Pipeline open, and on top we've got some settings. So here I've got to make sure that I've located my installed Instalod CMD path, and then I can set my batch name, my output path, and the file name format. On the bottom, I can start importing my files or entire folders. And in this case, I'm going to click Add Files here, and I'm going to import the car rim and a shoe. So there we have our files. I'm just going to go ahead and click Start and let this process. So now we've actually got one problem. When using the command line, we don't have an interface to assign materials. So what we'd have to do is we'd have to set these up using scene import rules. And we can do a lot with these. For example, in addition to being able to assign materials, we can also set up specific tessellation settings. So it's a very powerful way of setting up your CAD data and processing it with a fully automated workflow. I hope that this video has helped you to get started with processing your CAD data. And I hope to see you in the next videos while we start having a look at these scene import rules and how they can help you speed up your pipeline drastically. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. For the latest news about Instalot, please visit our website and follow us on Twitter. You can find all the links in the video description below. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.